everybody. Welcome to On the Edge of Entertainment, where I invite my friends from Las Vegas and around the globe to discuss their careers in entertainment. And today we have Jamie Witten, and she is a songwriter, etc. <laughs> we'll talk about all the amazing things that she does. Hi, Jamie. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yes. <laughs> the sister of um, Stacy Witten Summers, who I work with on occasion. And I have to say that uh, your sister's a huge fan. We were going to do a project together and she really wanted to bring you in on that. And I think she did, but yeah, I was going to meet you way back then, but we didn't get to do that project. Yes, that's but right. I'm, that's right. That yeah. was based out of New York. I was Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> yes, yes, that was and just going to be so amazing that show. Oh. I know we have to we have to do it. We still have to do it. Well, we will one we day. Will. <laughs> you know, we we have hopefully in the future of COVID, we will have plenty of opportunities to get back to the entertainment industry. But today we are celebrating the fact that you came out with this new EP, and yes. you are involved with this uh, product which is El Sativo Tequila, which you're the co-founder of. And you're just such an interesting person. I, I can't wait for you to tell me more about all this. Thank you. Okay. Yes, um, I, gosh, I don't even know where to, where to begin, really. Um, so my previous album was called Rare Bird. And mm -hmm. I, it was more jazz, uh, big band pop influenced. And I toured quite some time on that album and got some wonderful placements. And that was in 2012. Mm -hmm. But during that time, I was working downtown and coming from Reno, Nevada, my whole family, I'm in a, a family full of eight people. So six siblings um, and parents, but anyway. All talented, by the way, all talented <laughs> and interesting and gorgeous and all that. Um, so most of us moved down to LA because you know, where does music exist uh, mm -hmm. and film and, and just entertainment in general. And so uh, most of us moved down here and um, got into the bar industry. And I have always loved spirits. Um, and at that time, anyways, um, in 2012, my grandfather got sick. But anyway, being 92 years old, they want their comfort food. And, and you know, that's a ripe, ripe, good age. Uh, old age to uh, get what you want. And so anyway, I started to study him like a map. I had to trick him to eat the food that he needed to eat with better salts, better sugars, you know, and still have that comfort food, but not have, you know, the damage um, from most of our food today being so processed. Yes. So um, anyway, I started miraculously seeing him um, get better and in a better mood. And, uh, and again, going back and forth bartending. So I was super tired and then I had to wake up early in the morning. It's so um, hard. Yes. And the third thing I was doing was recording a new album, um, which took me six years to make. And now I'm finally here, um, ah. eight, eight, eight years later. Um, and some of the songs that are on my current album EP that was released this year on September 19th, mm -hmm. um, I had two years of kind of the waiting game um, where I had two films that wanted to place uh, three of the songs. Oh, wow. And, and so I didn't get to release it in time because one, they never got the funding, both of them. Oh, no. Um, so I just LA waited. is so famous for that. Right. Ugh. And as an independent musician, songwriter, you know, you have to think strategically and be smart about how you release your material because you don't have a major label behind you. And the funding behind you. Yeah. So, so being in the song um, placement world in film, TV, commercial ads, mm -hmm. um, with a big placement like that, it's, it's wonderful to release a song at the same time. Um, so you get that kind of double whammy um, and you get that mass media reach. So anyway, since they were never released uh, in the film, uh, films, um, I had to wait. And so now 2020 hit and I was feeling so down because of having all this material that has never been released. And just, it's my best material yet that I'm 120% so proud of and wouldn't change an ounce. Anything about the production, about the musicians I, I, I was so blessed to work with. 
uh, it's my best, my best work. So 2020 came around and the whole planet exploded, you know, yes, with so much awful awfulness. And, mm -hmm. but at the same time, so many things have surfaced that needed to be surfaced. And I fully agree with you on that. Yeah. And even, you know, um, for ourselves as, as our own personal selves, um, mm -hmm. things that we've always wanted to do or, or jobs that we've been in that, you know, actually, I don't really like doing this job. I'm going to do something else now. Yeah. Um, kind of it's open doors to exit the life that we were once living. And mm -hmm. um, some are positive, some are negative. You know, yeah. I know a, a handful of people um, that have been, um, that have been married for 20 years and now getting divorced, mm -hmm. you know, big it's changes, big, shifts. big, big shifts and changes. Bringing and stuff so to light, you know, is I think what right. 2020 has done, um, which most tragedies do bring about those kind of changes, you know, right. but this one has been a prolonged tragedy, right? Right. So. And so, you know, going back to, um, my EP, the first song off of my EP is called Cars Mars. And I just, everything in my being felt, this is the time. This is the time that I need to release these four songs because they're all relative to how our human race is feeling right now in mm. being disconnected and isolated and, you know, um, social media and, and not getting you know, the likes that you want, um, or, or it's just this roller coaster of emotions. Um, yeah. and, and cars Mars, um, is about reconnecting with ourselves and, and how important our relationships are. And when I was working downtown bartending and driving back and forth to take care of my grandfather while recording this EP, um, I just, you know, working till two in the morning, watching all um, the huge crowds of people be so oblivious and, and, you know, their conversations about um, he said this and this and that, just a lot of drama. Mm -hmm. um, and then having my other life at home where I got to spend quality time with my grandfather, the most mm -hmm. important things, you yes. know? Um, and so my co-writer, um, musical director, Ben Burgett, he um, called me at 1 a.m. one night on a Saturday night. And he says, I just wrote this piano part. You have to put some lyrics over it. And I said, mm. okay, well, well, send it to me. Five minutes later, I'm not kidding. I wrote the lyrics. I recorded it back and I sent it to him. And it hasn't changed sense. Wow. Sometimes and, that's just divine intervention, you know? Right. Right. I, I um, think that's the best. Yes. And do you mind so, if I play a little bit, bit of it right now? Sure. Oh, I'd love that. Okay. Once nothing mattered but play and everything so fast play That was, um, that was, that had so much heart in it. Well, it's, it's just about being disconnected and cars, Mars. I mean, when you're in, when you're in the middle, when you're in the middle of a bar and it's crowded and it's loud and people are, you know, slinging drinks and breaking glass and, and you're mm -hmm. the only sober one in the room, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see some really crazy things in conversations. Mm, and yeah. um, it just made me think that 
man, these people are on another planet. Yeah. You know, and, um, and not saying that I don't like to have a good time and have drinks and go out. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but it just in that moment, having my grandfather at home and then, you know, going to this crowded place where everybody, you know, was caring about expensive cars and, Mm -hmm. you know, what they're wearing and the bling bling and the low cleavage Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, just Mm -hmm. caring about more materialistic things and not truly connecting Mm -hmm. on a soul level. And it really started to bother me. Mm. Um, and so anyway, the, the music video, as you've seen, um, is just about a girl, um, going out and, and, and feeling that the club scene and, um, but then she goes back to where her happiness resides and taking moments for herself. Um, mm-hmm. And she's on the beach, which is me, um, mm-hmm. but, but not having the makeup on and not feeling, you know, that you have to impress anybody. Yeah. Too. Yeah. That's, it's like two different lifestyles. And right. I guess there's a time and a place, but we do need to become more connected you know, right. At least knowing that this one thing is real, but that's fun, you know, right. but, but not that that's real. Right. 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 And, you know, and it's not just about relationships. It's also about a heavier topic, which is our planet, um, mm. pollution, you know, um, and right now in 2020 being in the bar restaurant industry in the very beginning, you know, we're seeing a lot more, um, to go items, you know, plastic, styrofoam, mm-hmm. straws um, that are being dumped back into the ocean. Um, and those things are really important to to take care of and, and, and watch because, I mean, you just pollution is just not um, what our planet is. It's not sustainable. <laughs> it's, it's going to catch up to us. I and, love uh, that. That should be uh, your slogan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in, li- in living in, Lo- in Los Angeles, there's you have to own a car. I mean, we, we d- we're not like Chicago or New York where we have these, you know, the subway where you can just hop on and, you know, get to the next place. And um, Los Angeles is very spread out. So having so many cars here, I mean, we have the worst smog. I, I look on our, um, you know, on the app to look at the weather. And most times it says unhealthy air quality. And I'm like, oof. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, I left, I left um, LA and came here. I grew up in LA. I will. I mean, Los Angeles, there's so many amazing things that I, that I still revel in. There's so much opportunity here and it is really beautiful. Um, but, you know, for our human race going forward, we, we definitely have to pay attention to these things these important things, uh, when it comes to our environment. Um, so Agreed. anyways, that's, that's why I thought cars Mars was absolutely the appropriate song to release this year. Um, mm. so we can surface up to that reality and, and hopefully make a change. Yeah. Make sure you all click on the links below to, um, get those albums and those songs and uh I, I think you have a very unique um sound you know um you. with with also something to say and that's important sometimes it's it's just really important to listen to stuff that inspires or that brings up emotion right know? right um i am very excited about kind of the it's not my forefront song but it is the 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 title of my ep which is called backwards so for this particular song backwards i decided to name the ep backwards because absolutely being in 2020 you know we're reevaluating our our existence in our life and in our past and moving forward hopefully and this these lyrics can be used in in so many different parts of our lives. It could be about relationships. It could be about a job. It could be about politics. It could be, I mean, just really having such a deep heartbreak and not being able to move forward and feeling isolated and feeling alone. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, connecting, connecting back to our roots and, and, and um, nurturing those relationships that are important to us, family, you know, childhood friends, um, and also nurturing your creative 
side, you know, mm-hmm. all the things that you've always wanted to do and, and moving forward with that, not having any fear to block you. Mm-hmm. This seems like, like all the things that I've seen on your, um, on your pages and stuff, I feel like this represents you, how, how you are just natural and, you know, Thank I, like, you. I love this shot too, of you on stage. Were you in concert here or? It was for a Longmire, Longmire book launch for Dennis Illick, who actually takes all of my photos. He did the CD cover, uh, all of these photos that you see right here. Um, amazing, amazing artist. Um, yeah, beautiful. And one of, one of my biggest supporters in fans in my music. Um, so, but anyway, I, that was a performance that I was performing from the movie uh, Gaudi featuring John Travolta. And oh, wow, it yeah. was, it was a cover for House of the Rising Sun. Uh, and um, that was a great showcase. And that was in the yeah. middle of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. this, this must be a uh, movie that you did also. So I got to do a duet with the iconic actor, Edward James Omos, who's a friend of mine. Um, oh, awesome. Such a, such a, such a gift. Um, and it was originally, we recorded it um, for that when the Blade Runner movie 2049 came mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. um and unfortunately I didn't get in the film but I just had the pleasure of doing two different versions the classic cover song of um Vangelis in the mm-hmm. original Blade Runner in 1983 it was mm-hmm. the only lyrical song in the whole movie and so one of my favorite love songs of all time and the fact that I got to sing it with with Eddie was was just a highlight in my career wow. um, and so we did two different versions. Um, and the other version was an alternative version where it was more acoustic and kind of like a sci-fi John Mayer type version. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, it is on this album. It's on number four. It was produced, not Ben Burgett, but um, two different producers, Alex Burke and Chris Mullins. Mm. So we had such a good time. Again, the musicians that p- played on this song are just exceptional. The best in, in L.A., in my opinion. So it was just a wonderful project that I got to be a part of. I understand that you also, you know, with your guitar, you play jazz guitar. So I'm a self-taught musician and yes. And the best um, musicians are. (laughs) Yes. Um, I tried to play guitar for 10 years really. And um, I had a, a band when I was 18 to 22 um and my guitar player went you know bands break up and so we we went our own separate ways and I was just feeling so broken and and helpless because when you don't play an instrument um you're strapped you have to go depend on other people and the very next day I picked up a guitar and a week later I went and I forced myself to play every Hollywood Los Angeles, Orange County, open mic I could find. Oh my god. Every single like, probably five days a week. Good for you. I, and I and I forced myself to do it. And it's just so interesting how tragedy has to happen to really have people change, you mm-hmm. know, and push push themselves mm-hmm. um to in uncomfortable places. Um so I am so thankful for that because um I've had a number of occasions in my uh, pass that have blocked me and then has forced me um, because of being heartbroken. Mm. Yeah, you know? just to move in different directions. And that's true. You know, uh, it change, change is good. Sometimes we fear change. Sometimes change right. is overwhelming. But, but ultimately, it leads to a part of something in your life that you don't know yet. Right. And um, it's just the building blocks of, of who you end up being, you know, right. so change is good. Hey, change do you, is good. Do you feel like I see your guitar in the background? Is that just for looks or would you like to play something for us? Um, well, I'm, I'm not all hooked up. I'm going to, I'm going to pass because then I have to figure out the whole, <laughs> if you're not going to play for us, what about having a shot? <laughs> Having a Tell shot, about, yeah. I know we can't Salute. have a shot because <laughs> Stacy hasn't brought me the bottle yet. She said she was oh. going to, you know, if she was driving through Vegas, she she might bring me a bottle. Yeah, right. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> no, we'll 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 get you one for sure, for oh, sure. Man. It's, it's, well, 
I mean, your tequila has won awards in its first year out and everything like that. And I am just dying to experience it, but feel free to tell us more about it. I know yeah. you guys wrote a song about it too. Yeah. Um, in, it, it, things like that aren't really planned. I was so excited. You know, we first got, you know, our, our bottles. We went down to Jalisco. We did the final tasting. We were so excited. We, we got all of our bottles made and the label on. And so I packed my bag full of six bottles, which you're not supposed to do, but <laughs> you know, uh, came back and uh, had a bunch of very talented musician friends um, join me one evening and we finished off the whole bottle. Uh, and it is the ultimate giggle juice. It's one of a kind, new, innovative, distillation process oh, wow. that no no other tequila has ever done um we're 100 usda approved as well as eu approved um non-gmo kosher certified um, we don't cut any corners so no diffusers no autoclaves it's only stone ovens um, oh my gosh Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's, there's oh, so many bullet points that I could rattle off that separate us from all of them, but um, it is truly just a beautiful tequila. Uh, we have our Blanco out right now. That's won three awards, oh uh, double golds and one in the San Francisco world spirit competition, which is one of the only blind tastings. And uh, oh. out of all the tequilas, it won best, best in class. And so overall, uh, Reposados and Anejo, which is very rare wow. uh, for a Blanco to win. So we're super honored and very, very excited. We just got into Whole Foods as the core core brand for tequila. And then uh, we're in Total Wine Wait, as now, well. Wait, here in Vegas? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so purchase a bottle and support you guys now? Yeah. So as oh, of awesome. right now, as of right now, we are in five states. So California, Nevada, New Mexico, Illinois, and Texas. And All right. You guys are yes. hard. I know Stacy's working hard too. <laughs> I know. I know. We all have, you know, so many things we're juggling, but at least, yeah. you know, I have to say one of my biggest accomplishments and the thing that I'm most proud of and thankful for that most people don't get to ever experience this is to work with my family. And it's amazing how, the, the relationship you guys have. I mean, I just want to be at your family reunions. <laughs> I want to be they're, an honorary they're a good time. family member. Yeah, it's, it's been super fun. I mean, even with music, I've done so many projects with, with Stacy and, and uh, we wrote a, a family Christmas song together and, oh. and we just really, really work well together and respect each other and, and have the same interests. So that, mm -hmm. that really, really helps. And growing up in a family, you know, our, our parents were very, um, our, my mother, our mother especially, um, was into juicing and, and health and working out. And oh. so it really instilled that, that lifestyle in us going forward and especially in entertainment. I mean, that's, you have to, you have to take care of yourself. You got to look good. Um, yes. so it really helped, you know, moving forward in, uh, the entertainment, uh, world of Los Angeles for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and going back to the tequila, it seems like, you know, all the things I know about you being very holistic and everything have basically transferred into the projects that you've done, like the mm -hmm. bar at prank and the menu that you have there and right. all this that you said, gluten-free and kosher and all this in the tequila that you have. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's amazing yeah. how different aspects of our lives will take us down these other roads that lead to success. Right. right, right. And I always go back to, you know, my, my happiest time, you know, I, if you ask yourself, when was the happiest I've ever felt? Because, you know, being an artist, I think you're just born with the roller coaster of emotions, you know, <laughs> and, and for me, a really true, true, happy time in my life was spending time with my grandfather, you mm. know, our conversations, uh, the food he would eat and how it would change him, you know, and so mm. he would start to feel better. Yeah. Um, it just, it gives me goosebumps to think about it because I wish everybody had that experience and had that. I had a friend ask me one time, she says, are you always going to live with your grandfather? And I'm like, yes, I will mm. until he passes, you know, yeah. um, I, I wish 
everybody could experience that. And unfortunately in our country, there's a stigma with living with your parents or living with your grandparents, or, you know, we've just really separated ourselves uh, Mm -hmm. a lot. And um, so anyway, the respect, (laughs) the respect aspect for elders in our country is a little bit different. It's a lot different than in other countries. You know, they really respect their elders and and now that you've spent time with somebody who's that age, you right. can see how their life experiences have um, been amazing. And, and you kind of right. put yourself in that picture, like, okay, when I'm 92, is somebody going to respect the things that I've done? Or am I right. going to be looked at like, you know, how people f- are with elders? It's just, it's just right. society has become really different yeah it's bizarre <laughs> there's a in, in short um i'm a documentary fanatic so i oh, yeah. i i love documentaries and and especially about uh emotional anything um mm-hmm. and uh there's a documentary called happiness and it's the study of happiness and i back saw in that the, one okay so you know back in yeah, the but 80s, explain they, it yeah yeah back in the 80s um they could study depression but they never thought that you could um, study happiness. And I believe late in the ni- uh, 1990s or early 2000, then USC or um, was it uh, uh, UCLA studied happiness for the first time and discovered that the, the most happy places um, in the world is Denmark and a little island outside of Japan. I think it was called o- Okinawa. Um, so families, I mean, they live to be 120, you know, great, great grandchildren. They're playing out in the streets and dancing and, and, you know, all the older ladies at a hundred years old are sipping tea together. I mean, they just spend so much quality time in Denmark. Uh, everything's communal. People live together. They cook together. They play together. Mm-hmm. Um, those things for our human race are so important, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 unfortunately, um, here we're just a little more detached. Um, yeah, we, we, we so. try to find happiness outside of ourselves or our environment. We think we have right. to go do something or see something or be with someone to be happy. You know, it's, it's gotten weird, <laughs> but I think like you say, you know, connecting back to self throughout this whole COVID thing has been the one positive thing that right. has happened with COVID. I am very, very excited though for 2021 for many reasons, <laughs> but um, I'm excited to hear what artists will produce. I, Every, I everything, so everything that's been just, you know, compressed and held in and, you know, and this year, like so many things are changing that hopefully by this next year, people are going to really spend time and craft especially in music. And, you know, there's so many cutting corners, tequila. Mm-hmm. There's so many people cutting corners mm-hmm. um, and, and you just can't do that to have a quality product, you Agreed. know? Agreed. Um, and I, I think s- some people have been able to take t- the time they needed to, to develop things. And I, I know, I, right. I think 2021 and, and beyond is going to bring about a lot of things because we've all reconnected and found new ways to be happy. Hopefully, hopefully people, you know, have found their happiness. I know a lot of people have not, but you know, it's been an exploration for sure. Right. And again, going back to my EP backwards, it just, it's about, you know, you're, you're here and you're in your, you just keep moving backwards, but now 2021, we have to move forward. You can't go backwards anymore. You got to mm-hmm. go forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hopefully I, you know, hit some soft spots with this EP um, and, and help people reconnect. Awesome. Well, is there anything um, particularly funny or um, fame worthy or anything that's happened to you that you want to share? Um, well, one touring experience that I'll never forget <laughs> um, I was on tour with two very good friends, um, and very talented musicians, uh, Dave Barry from jelly bread and Izzy Cox, who unfortunately a few years ago, she passed away. Oh, wow. Um, but I was on this 
this very memorable tour um, up the the north uh, west here, um, mm. and uh, there was this little bar that Izzy booked in Oakland, and mostly because we were independent artists, we would play three to four shows a day oh, for. Wow a month and a half to two months while we we're on the road. And so I would usually do all the booking. So we would play farmer's markets in the morning, uh, art galleries or cafes in the afternoon, music venues at night, and then late night ha- um, op- open mics. And so we would hustle, hustle, hustle. And anyway, it was the one gig that Izzy booked and uh, it was in Oakland and it was at this little bar. And the moment we arrived, it was all biker bar like like bikes just <laughs> lined the whole place and I'm this you know Joni Mitchell little singer songwriter like what what okay how are these guys gonna you know yeah react to my music and, yeah. and Izzy had amazing music where and so did Dave, so does Dave Barry and um but you know really fun you know um uh, upbeat she was like a rockabilly Johnny Cash perfect oh, for wow. uh you know a biker bar so I was I was a little nervous so when mm-hmm. I walked in it was uh all white guys mm-hmm. a lot of them bald biker um and it was kind of a uh it smelled like pee and oh, cement no. it yeah. was one of those bars yeah. where they put peanuts on the fo- the floor too and I was like oh gosh <laughs> and I walk in and I'm it, Izzy and I are the only girls in there and it's packed full of dudes Oh my and gosh. so I'm like, okay, you know, starting to set up and, and, uh, and I'm like thinking to myself, I'm like, how come none of the men are looking at me? Mm. You know, not that I need to be yeah. checked out or no, noticed, but, but, but yeah, but, you're one of two women in the whole place. You'd think right, that, you know, they right. would be looking and not a single glance. Okay. And so I was like, interesting okay and so anyway Can't we start the playing end of this story <laughs> yeah oh yeah and so all the guys the biker bar uh, guys are at the bar and they're slinging drinks and they they're breaking glass and they, they ended up uh, lighting a, a flag on fire and the it, it was just like what is going on like during you know um our songs and right in the middle of my song i was up there playing i hear this this yell and all the guys run to the back of the bar outside. And I'm like what? sitting there with my little guitar, like, where did everybody go? Like, what oh just happened? Gosh. There was a there was a flag fire and all this stuff. So anyway, they all ran outside. And I was like, what is going on? I put down my guitar. We went outside and there was a boxing rink. And oh. two dudes are in the boxing rink going oh, at it. And gosh. I'm like this is the most bizarre, like in the middle of Oakland, like what is going on? And so everybody, after (laughs) they got done boxing, everybody came back in and Izzy started playing and everybody was starting to get rowdy again and having a good time. And in the middle of her song, she hit some kind of chord that sprung something up about a um, barbershop Mm -hmm. and four dudes, I'm not even kidding, bust out in barbershop harmony what and I'm not even kidding it was the most bizarre thing and uh, so at the end Izzy decides to sign her guitar and she gives it to to the guys and and I'm like great now she's gonna have to play my guitar she just gave her guitar away and she she fell in love with these these guys and so it ended up to be an all white biker gay bar (laughs) <laughs> I knew that I knew you were gonna say that somehow I, like, I knew that's where this story might go yeah oh, so I know the story was a little long-winded but it's it no, was it's the most great. bizarre experience um I'll, that I'll never forget and it actually I hold it very close because of Izzy um wow. being such a being such a riot and an amazing artist so huh that place sounds interesting for sure <laughs> I don't even remember what it was called yeah. Um, but I was like, Izzy, I'm like, this is the last time you're in a any gig. Oh but, my gosh. Yeah. That's a cute story. I love it. Yeah. Well, yeah. is there anything else that you want to share? Do you want to share some artist tips? Um, something, you know, significant about how to survive with this, you know, uh, with this industry of being a creative person? Um, I would say, um, I mean, everything I think that we've talked about kind of 
is yeah. in hopes that people open up and, and just don't let fear block you anymore. Mm. You know, we're, we're facing our biggest fears right now. Yeah. True. You know, with wor- world devastation. And if, you know, it's about what makes you happy inside, mm-hmm. you know, do what, because we only have this long of life <laughs> It's true, and, and you have to live it the best that you can and explore options and, and, you know, just, yeah. just hone, hone in on your creativity. If you're a creative person, um, because this is the time to do it. Yeah. And I, think- cause I think you'll get the most honest, honest of yourself. And it's hard, you know, to be an artist, it's, it's hard to be honest all the mm, way. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and deliver that and mm-hmm. have people and, and be under a spotlight. Um, and if you can do that, I, I believe that, that only good things will come. Yeah, absolutely. You know, cheers to 2021. <laughs> yes. Yes. And- um, to hear my EP, uh, join me on Spotify as well. Um, I'm on iTunes and Amazon. Go to my website at wittenmusic.com. Join me on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter under Witten Music. If you want to try our tequila, El Sativo, you want to go to elsativo.com and also on Instagram and Facebook, Twitter, uh, El Sativo Tequila. Awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> Yay. I know. I'm so excited for you to try it. Yeah. We're so proud. We're so proud. Yes. Well, please, everybody out there, please follow, like, and share everything that we've discussed. Right. Um, I would say lastly, um, go to saveourstages.com mm. okay. for our live music. Yes. Mm-hmm. We need these music venues to stay alive. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Let's <laughs> hope it all works out. Fingers crossed. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Totally. All right. Thank you so much, Jamie, for hanging out with me today and you letting me know all it. about your beautiful music and your beautiful soul. And um, look forward to meeting you in person someday. I know I will. And, yes. Um, and hopefully be cheersing tequila. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. And I can't wait to see you perform as well. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Someday, some way. Yes. Yes. And maybe it will be, I'm hosting as Jessica Rabbit. That would be, that would be super fun. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, the possibilities are endless with creative endeavors. So we just need to make something happen, you know? Right. Right. Thanks, Cody. Nice to meet you. You Thanks for sharing your day with me. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you so much. And everybody out there, just dream there and do it. Everything so fast. Hey, hey.